my then five-year-old daughter, she's 14 now, um, I was reading to her one night and she covered up the page of Peter Pan I was reading and said, Dad, how did Peter meet Captain Hook in the first place? And this little light went off in my writer's head because in that terrific classic, there's a boy who can fly, which is never explained, and he never grows old, which is never explained, and he travels with a little personal assistant. He, as she asks, gets involved with these pirates. He can detach from his shadow somehow, and has detached from his shadow, and at the beginning of the wonderful story is coming back to claim his shadow, none of which was ever explained. And this little light went off in my head, and I, I said to her at the time, I, her, her name is Paige, and I said, Paige, uh, that's its own story. And I said, no, 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 that's its own book, and Daddy's going to write the book. And I introduced Dave to a word he had to look up in the dictionary, which was outlining. And uh, we sat down and outlined this book that we thought might be 90 pages. We thought, honestly, we thought we'd make about eight copies of this book at a copy shop, and he'd keep four and I'd keep four. And uh, we laid out the, the framework of the outline, and it was 80-some chapters long. And we realized this is not going to be 90 pages. This is going to come in longer than that. Well, it came in at 550 pages. We divide the book by character. I take the psychopathic, piratical type characters. He takes the happy-go-lucky, humorous, childlike characters. And if chapter five in our outline is predominantly, everything has everybody in it, but if it's predominantly the pirates, then I would try a first draft of it. He would rewrite it, send it back. I would rewrite that, send it back. And we'd do this anywhere between six and 11 times back and forth until it, didn't, it no longer read like a Ridley chapter and it no longer read like a Dave chapter. It just, we sort of found this third voice. I've never traveled extensively in Germany, but I think Western culture has been so influenced by Germany um, in a positive way for so long. I'm really a musician by training. And um, to me, almost all of the great composers came out of Germany, the great philosophers come out of Germany. Um, writers, when I was a kid, come out of Ger uh, came out of Germany. And of course, it's the Brothers Grimm that led to all the Disney work. And in, in many ways, Disney kind of corrupts the Brothers Grimm in that those stories are quite dark and menacing. And Walt Disney spins them all the other direction, um, which I love, but it's very different than what they are. But that tradition of um, fairy tale is something that is unique in the world. I mean, every culture has fairy tales, and no, none stronger, I don't think, than the German fairy tales that have really permeated so many societies and cultures. And, and writing, especially for young readers, has been interesting because they really want a piece of you. They want to know you and learn about you. I've always felt it was important to be accessible to my young readers. So there is an email address on my website, RidleyPearson.com, that goes directly to me. And though it takes me months to answer these sometimes, I try to answer all of them and, and reconnect with these young readers because I think uh, it's important to keep people reading and whatever gets you know, young readers excited about reading, if it happens to be a one-line email from an author, so, so be it. I believe we're going to try to open up the seventh Kingdom Keepers book, the final Kingdom Keepers book, which I should begin sometime next year, and do a collaborative effort with my readers where I will create an outline and say on a Monday, I will tell the readers what needs to happen in the following chapter. Send me your ideas on how this could happen. And, and we might get a thousand ideas and we will sort through them and pick three of them out. And I will write that chapter that week and submit it on Sunday night onto the internet so everyone can read where we went from Monday to Sunday. And, and we'll do this through maybe two thirds of the book and then I'll complete the book and, and publish it as a hardcover book. The, the fun thing would be to have 
basically an interactive book. People have tried before books that have, you know, you pick an ending. I've written four endings. You can pick B or A or Y. Or, and, and that in, interests me, but I think it's even more fun to have the young readers actually deciding on a weekly basis, where are we going next? Where are we taking this story? And then be able to see their idea be manifest in the next chapter. And I would thank them so that at the end of this book, there might be a list of four or 500 names of people who had submitted ideas. And as a community, we will decide how the series ends, um, rather than me force it on the community. And so, you know, it could be very fun and, and very socially interactive.